go in three, two. Oh, the intro, intro music, you know what it is. It, we are back once again for this week in sports. Your boy, you don't know my name, then I can't believe you're watching this. This week, we got a bunch of talk about a lot of good things. It's coming up on my favorite time of the season, sports-wise. Everything's popping off. Um, as you can see, we got R2-D2 in here as the co-host. We fired all the interns. Freaking, we fired the reception. We cleaned house. The construction workers, they bailed on the new studio. We don't know what's going on with that. So we got R2 in here for this week in sports on this episode. But we're going to start... The same way we started, I think, last episode. Little news on uh, on my dog, on our dog Dene. Do not leave your gates open when you have a dog in the backyard. Something bad could happen. Something bad almost happened to our dog. Thank God she's all good. She's she's all right. But things bad things can happen if you if you let your dog out. But it was by an accident. But she's all good. Just keep your gates shut. Just keep your noisy dog, your barking ass dog, in the fucking in the fence, man. You know we don't need that barker, that barking motherfucker coming to bite us and shit. My dog doesn't bite though. My dog doesn't bite. She's kind of a softy, and a little bit more of a softy today. No, but uh, uh, in this week in sports though, Oilers, they hot as always. Jays, they coming up on the season. MLB has technically already started in uh seoul south korea and uh but before we get into any of that and of course twish at the end uh personally my announcing for the junior oilers has unfortunately come to an end because uh, the junior oilers were eliminated on the road against sherwood park uh sherwood park beat them three to one in the best of five i was hoping i was really really hoping it would go to a five game series because i would be calling that game it would have been at home at the bill hunter arena named after the great Bill Hunter. Uh, just a quick thing on Bill Hunter. He started the WHL. He was, a, he was a big advocate for hockey and local hockey. He started the Oilers and a bunch. Of, just look up his, his resume, Bill Hunter, uh, one of the best. So they named that, that arena that I was working at after him, and the junior Oilers were nothing but good. Had a great experience. Shout out to my boy, Ewan Manning. He was my uh, – He was. we did play-by-play. We went back and forth. He did color, I did color, so I got some experience doing color commentary. I uh, did some of the play-by-play, and we would switch off back and forth. And we had just a great time, and it was a good run for the Junior Oilers. Give them a shout-out, give them some love, people. It was a good season. It was a really good season. We were, we were two games away from going to the provincial championships. Like, we were that close. And unfortunately, like I said, Sherwood Park Kings, they beat us 3-1, and they move on against the Calgary Buffaloes. And um, I'm, just, I'm just really grateful for the opportunity, like I've said before. But I just want to get it on record on here saying that. And I kind of put my foot in the door for next year. Like, we can't really go on a step backwards because a lot of these teams in, uh, in the AEHL, the Alberta Elite Hockey League, they have uh, play-by-play announcers. So it wouldn't make sense uh, to anyone involved, anyone who I talked to, to take a step backwards and not have play-by-play all season next year. So I'm looking forward to that um, already. I mean, the season just ended, but it's such a good time doing play-by-play and just announcing in general. And so um, there's more. As, as soon as one door closes and one season ends, another one opens up, and that is the River Hawks coming up. Uh, I should be doing some play-by-play for the collegiate games, hopefully, hopefully, I, I, if my schedule aligns, and uh, because like my schedule is kind of in flux right now, working you know out of town here and there, and um, just bouncing around the province doing other gigs. But the thing about the Riverhawks, it, it's they're incorporating Indian relay with the Riverhawks like they did last season on the home opener. The Riverhawks uh, allowed a team of Indian relay competitors to come do a showcase on the field at the River Hawks home opener. And the and the crazy thing is, Caleb, I just got news yesterday too, is that the home opener is on June 7th. The season opener for our organization of Indian Relay goes that same weekend, June 8th and 9th. Yeah, so <laughs> it's going to be a busy weekend. 
June seventh, we're, we're doing a showcase at the at the river, at the Remax Field for the Riverhawks, and then the next day, got to go. Uh, I go to go to a Strathmore, and do some announcing on the eighth and ninth for Indian Relay, our season opener. So I'm super stoked for that. Obviously, what I just realized though, after when I was think like when I got the news yesterday, I was thinking about it. I'm like, if everything goes well in the Oilers season, we'll be in this. We'll be in the Stanley Cup Finals. Hopefully we've won the cup by then, or else that's going to be like deep, deep into the series, or at the beginning of this. I don't know when it would be, but there could be some overlap there. Um, obviously, the announcing is is first and foremost. As much as I do love my Oilers, I'm committed professionally to do the, these announcing gigs, and I'm super excited for it. Uh, River Hawks, the fact that they're inviting us again is amazing. They're going to have a round dance. Uh, after that home opener as well and so it's going to be a jam-packed weekend and i'm going to do my my prep i'm going to do a bunch of homework and 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 do all my prep work in advance of that indian relay because um it's got to make it as hype as possible and this season's going to be so much fun this will be my coming on my third season of covering indian relay this is crazy yeah it's coming on my third summer of actually like doing announcing professionally it's a trip Time flies. Um, but yeah, Junior Oilers, th- thank you to them. But the Senior Oilers, our Edmonton Oilers, we are hot. We're 8 1 and 2 in our last 11. We play Buffalo tonight. We kind of gave the Habs in our last game, we, we, we let, the, let the door open for them to come back. And, but luckily, we won that game. But uh, we didn't play a full 60. So our best is still, is still to come. And I mean, when we when we played the Avs previously, that was like playoff hockey on Saturday. I was in Calgary for that for a poker game, and I took a couple bucks. I'm pretty good at poker. It was trippy. I was like reading people. Like I would look right at them, and I I would just tell exactly what they had, and it would trip people out. Like because some of them were kind of new. Like they played poker before, but like I've been playing poker a long time, so I would just like call what they had, and I I uh. It succeeded in that, but the, the 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 winner of it all just had so many, so many chips. So me and my Greg, shout out to Greg, um, we just split the second prize because we had like the same amount of chips. And Buddy had like ninety percent of the chips. We're like, hey, whatever, we're not even gonna mess with you. You take you take the majority of it, but we'll take a couple bucks. And by then, though, it was like, dude, it was like two thirty in the morning or something. Like we we were there for like I don't know seven eight hours playing poker all night. And uh, their blinds were not going up the way they should have because that's why we were there for so long. But it, anyways, it was a fun fun time. We watched the Avs game the next game. That was like a playoff game, as we all seen. Um, we unfortunately lost that one, but the way the game went, it was so entertaining. We lost that like with a second left in overtime. Then the Habs game uh, ended up winning that, even though we didn't play a full 60. And then Buffalo were playing tonight. We just played them like uh, – like, 10 days ago or something. And that was the weird game where uh, we thought we lost it. So the, the teams left the ice, left the, the benches. They went, they were in the dress room. And I always wondered if this would ever happen since the coaches challenges have been a thing. They, we challenged it after everyone was gone. And sure enough, it was offside. So they called it no goal. So we, so it took like a, a few minutes for the players to come back on the ice or come back to the bench because obviously some of them probably would have taken their equipment off and everything. It's something like I've never seen before. And uh, we ultimately lost that, I think, in a shootout. But uh, it was just a trippy ending. We, we got a point out of it because of that, that challenge. It was like with 20 seconds left. And um, that, that, was, that was back, yeah, Saturday, March 9th. And then we took it to the Penguins. We shot out the Penguins. Shortly thereafter, shout out to Calvin Picard for that shutout. Took it to the Capitals, seven to two. The Avs beat us in the overtime, like I said. Then we and then we played the uh, the Canadians um, the other night and ended up winning that in OT. Sabers tonight, and then your boys. If these are your boys, turn this podcast off. Don't watch unless you're my dad. We play the Leafs uh, after the, after the Sabers. So it should be a uh, interesting couple games. We're coming right down to the finish. 
This is uh, this is the time we play for. There's only 16, 15 games left after tonight's game, and we're sitting pretty we're sitting pretty good as it stands right now. We got eighty six points. We're eight back. We're eight points back of Vancouver for first. We got three games in hand. If we were to win those three games, we're only two points back of them. So first is not out of the question whatsoever. We're three points up on the Kings, seven points up on the Golden Knights, which is tremendous. Like if we could face the Kings for a third year in a row in the first round, that'd be a trip. Um, you, you'd think they'd want to get their revenge, obviously. But uh, let's go for that. Let's go for that top seed. We haven't won a Pacific Division title in a long, long time. We were close a couple years, but um, never actually taken that title down. Some other NHL news, though. I was I was looking at uh, the NHL. The GMs had their meetings, and speaking on coaches' challenges, like when I was talking about the uh, the Buffalo game, they challenged uh, that offside, and that's the only thing that coaches have been able to challenge since that rule has been implemented is goals. But there's talks of uh, penalties. They can challenge certain penalties, uh, the puck over glass, because sometimes that's hard to tell if. It actually went over the glass without someone touching it, or it hit it going off the top of the glass, or anything. If it hits something, and it's it's not um, it's not deemed a penalty, but sometimes it's hard to tell in real time, obviously. So they're talking about that, changing that, giving the coaches an extra challenge in that regard, and also high sticking penalties. Sometimes players really, really sell it like really well, where it, like the stick hits their visor and they just immediately go up and sell it like they got hit in the face. And then you look back on replay, and it's like, no, that's not a penalty whatsoever. So, uh, coaches having more uh, power in the in the challenging department like that, I think, is a good thing. So you just want to get the call right, and um, so in those regards, it doesn't happen too often. So it's not like it'll delay the game by that much. Um, the thing about the puck over the glass thing is, if it, it if it's called a penalty on the ice, and you think it's not a penalty, so you challenge it. Uh, you get an additional penalty if it was an actual penalty, so it would turn on turn to a five on three. So there's also that. So it's a little more exciting to, in in that regard. Another thing that they they were talking about, they hinted at the, in the GM meetings, is the the use of teams LTIR. These teams will be putting players on long term injured lists so that it doesn't go against the cap. That's deemed by some uh, looking at it that. They're manipulating it in a way to add players at the trade deadline because these players that are long, long-term long injured reserves, they uh, they don't go against the cap. So you have all this free cap room. And Tampa was a benefactor of that when they won the Cup, as well as Vegas. And Vegas, I mean, no one's saying that these players aren't injured, but they, it's funny when they come right back at the first game of the playoffs because there's no salary cap in the playoffs. So there's going to be some discussion uh, in regards to that. It's not something we do as Oilers because we, we're not cheap like that. And I'm, like I said, I'm not saying these players aren't injured, but it's just it's just convenient when they come back on the first game of the fucking playoffs. Um, yeah. So as always, there's other news and other small things going on, but those are the big takeaways for me in the world of in the oil country and the world of hockey uh let's see what else what else what else there's a couple other small things no never mind oh no barkov's out but fuck him we, none of them none of, none of us watch him his games aren't even on in our region um but yeah come down to the, the stretch for the oilers same time the jays are starting our Toronto Blue Jays, less than a week away from opening day against Tampa Bay. Santiago Espinal just got traded for a minor leaguer, right-hander Chris McElvain. Let's throw some love for, uh, for he's been with us for a few years now, Santiago Espinal. Peace out, brother. You played good for us. Where's that? Where's that? Where's the crowd at? Yeah, Aspinall, he was with us for uh, quite some time. He didn't put up huge, huge numbers, but he was dependable. He was a good infielder. and But we had to make this move. Uh, my understanding was to free up some space uh, for a backup catcher because Jansen, our main catcher, may not be ready for opening day. He's got a 
nagging wrist injury. He always has these hand injuries. It fucking sucks because we all love Jan, Janner. And, and also there's talks of Joey Votto, the Canadian, the 40-year-old Canadian that we signed to, to a tryout. Um, he, might, he might be able to make the team. I, I know he got a home run in like his first at-bat in spring training. And he is 40 years old. But, uh, I mean, he's, he's from Toronto. He's played with the Cincinnati Reds his whole career. And it was it was big news when we signed him. So there's a chance that he'll make the team. Um, hopefully he does. I mean, that'd be a cool story to see Joey Votto, the Canadian, uh, make the team. He he had some emotional letter, a handwritten letter that was hard to read. I've seen a picture of it, but it was basically saying he apologized for like he talked some shit about Canadian baseball uh, a few years back. I didn't even really even realize that he did. I'm sure it probably crossed crossed over the airways, but never really thought too much of it. And yeah, he just got he, he wrote like a fucking three page letter saying I'm sorry. And it's, I didn't even get through it because it was hard to read. And who cares? You're a J now. You probably always dreamed of being a, of being a J as a kid. So you make mistakes. So he, he was probably maybe bitter. I can't speak for him, obviously, but maybe he was bitter because. He was playing in Cincinnati. He never had a chance to play for the Jays, and now that he's playing for the Jays, he's like, "Oh shit, maybe I should uh, retract some of those statements." But whatever, it is what it is. There's a chance he'll make the team, but we're yeah, we're like a week away from the from the season opener. The MLB season has already started technically, like I said, in in Seoul, South Korea, between the LA Dodgers and the San Diego Padres. They went over there about a week ago. They played a in the MLB World Tour. They're calling it. Uh, they went over there, played some exhibition games uh, against some of the local teams there, and they they played two games there against each other to start the regular season. Here's the weird thing, though: they played two games there. They're going to fly back to North America, and and then LA is going to play three more spring training games, so exhibition games before they the rest of their season starts. And San Diego is going to play two, or the other way around. But yeah, they're they're playing two regular season games. They're coming back to play more exhibition games, and then they're starting the their other games here. But regardless, it's pretty cool. I didn't I didn't have the opportunity to watch the games because TSN doesn't have a PlayStation app or an app on Roku. So uh, TSN had those ones, but LA won the first one five to two, and uh, San Diego was a crazy crazy uh, shootout. Fifteen eleven was the second game. Um, but they, both teams like differed home once one team batted first, the first game, and then they switched for the second game. So both teams only lost one home game technically throughout the season, but I'm sure the MLB, like all these leagues are doing these, these world tours, if you want to call them that, and just showcasing their brand of the sport to other parts of the world, which I think is good. Um, MLB, I remember they had a game, the Yankees went over and played in London a couple years back. I can't remember who was, but they transformed one of their fo- their football soccer stadiums to uh, MLB field and it was a trippy layout, but it was pretty cool. I watched that one. I can't remember who the, who, the Yankees were playing somebody, but judge was there and it was like a, it was a huge spectacle. Like it was sold out and it, it it's weird because you wouldn't first think that people from England first of all, know a lot about American baseball, but would want to go and watch it. But they, they came out in droves and just sold that place out. I think it was Wembley. If I'm not mistaken. Don't quote me on that. But, yeah, it was one of those huge stadiums. And, and the NHL goes uh, goes overseas and plays as well. And, uh, the NBA did China. They, they go all over the place. And the NFL as well. NFL last year played some games. I think in London too. So all these teams are just going all over the place and and doing their thing around the globe. Holy, of course, my phone's just blowing up when I'm trying to do a pod here. Eh? My God, Edward declares for the WNBA draft. So you know, on this podcast, we talk a lot of uh, WNBA and women's basketball and curling and all this shit. Yeah, so uh, we'll stop doing that because uh, because we never do it. Um, oh, yeah, another thing. So Shohei Otani, 
just reading up on him today. He got this crazy contract, but six hundred eighty million dollars of the seven hundred million dollars is deferred till the deal's over. So he's he's this uh, the the guy who pitches and bats, and he got a seven hundred million dollar contract, but he's only getting paid technically two million dollars per year, and it's deferred till afterwards. And <laughs> I don't know, it, it's it's trippy that you can do that, but also um, in another in the, kind of the same vein. His, uh, what you want to call his translator, got fired because of stealing. Apparently, he was stealing. I don't know from who. I mean, Shohei's got a lot of dough. I don't know, but yeah, it was just kind of an interesting uh, thing in news that his translator. You're probably getting paid pretty well if you're a translator for Shohei, man. And the MLB, like. Why do you need to steal, man? Now you're now you're, now you're gonna probably have to go back to Japan. Yeah, no one's gonna hire you to translate. What good are you? Now you just gotta go work like a normal job. What are you gonna do, man? I guess no. You can fucking maybe go to jail. I don't know. Who knows? Um, but yeah, baseball is rat ramping up. I'm stoked for that. By the time we do another one of these episodes, the Jays are gonna be playing. Fucking pumped. There's a lot of, we got a lot of injuries though. There's um uh Jose Barrios. He start he's the opening day starter because it's supposed to be Gosman, but I guess he's uh dealing with like a, a nagging injury. So but there's a chance he'll be like he'll be good. Like he he pit, pitched a simulated game, they call it today, and he's gonna pitch on the last day of the regular or the preseason. So he should be alright. Why does this keep coming up? I didn't have this up last time. It's a freaking phone. Oh, Jansen's injured, and who else? Uh, Manoa, he has a cranky shoulder, quote-unquote cranky shoulder, but he pitched like 20 to 30 pitches or something, and then there was, who else was injured? There was another cat that was injured. But they're not, these aren't huge injuries, and it's good to get these little tweaks out of the way early on. Ease them into it. Ease these guys into it. Because it's a long season, 162 games. Don't have to rush it early on here. So um, we should be we should be for the most part good to go. All our players good to go for the start of the season. Janner, they said about two weeks, about like uh, five days ago, and so he could be he could be starting, um, or at least on the starting roster. Danny Jansen. Alejandro Kirk is our other catcher, and he's going probably going to take most of the load for the uh, the start of the season. Yeah, is this your homeboy coming up? To, why are people coming up when I record? Oh my god, he's got like a little notebook. Ask me if he wants to come on the pod. No, do it. You got twenty three minutes. <laughs> this is a, oh my god, this happened before. Oh my god, this is this is wow. We're not editing this out either. I'm going to see what this guy wants. Yeah, we're doing a podcast in here. Oh, my God. Tell us, guy, are you, is that the guy from last week? Tell us, they had a guy come through here last week. I told your colleague to email me. He never did. That's a tell us guy. Where was Shaw? Or, or no, we were with Tell us. We are with Tell us. But we got some Shaw things. We got some Telus things. We got some other things. We got some of those things. We got some of that thing. We got, you know, we got all, all. We got it all around here. No, but um, talking about the MLB um, injuries. Yes. Speaking of MLB, I'm going to do a little quick reviews. I don't really do, I don't often do reviews on here, but I was playing some of that new MLB, the show 24. It just came out. Pretty good. It's pretty fun. They got like uh, some new features, uh, some new game. Uh, what do they call them? Game modes. You can tell I don't play that many video games anymore. But uh, game modes, um, features. Yeah, they. I don't even know if I can say this. There was these. There was these leagues back in the day. I don't know how politically correct you can call them now, but like there was these leagues back in the day, where like only black people or people of color were allowed to play. Right. 
and and they're in the game. They're the Negro leagues. That's what some of the best uh, ball players were, and it's unfortunate they were that they had to make their own leagues. But they they, they had some astounding players. I, I I played a little bless you. I played a little bit of uh, Hank Aaron's story, one of the greatest home hitters in all of history, and um, yeah, graphics are amazing. Gameplay's improved a little bit. But their animations, I, you can tell, like, they just copy a lot of the same animations they've used since, like, when was the first one I bought? Oof. I bought a few of these. I bought, when I first bought my PlayStation, I bought MLB, the show. I think it was, it was the one with Strowman on the cover. It might have been 18. Have I had my PlayStation for six years? Holy shit. Anyway, some of the animations are the same, but same thing with all the sports games that Use the same animations, but overall, I like I like the MLB the show. Um, I know last year they incorporated create your own stadium. I haven't even got that far into this one to see if they still have it, but it's fun. Another review I want to shout out to this book is not brand new, but it's Al Michaels. You can't make this up. I've been learning a lot. Al Michaels is one of the best play by play announcers of all time. He has more hours on television than anyone in history covering sports and uh, he's been doing it since like the freaking like the 60s late 60s early 70s and i'm about halfway through and i'm learning a lot a lot of stuff that i kind of knew but it's cool to like read about how he utilizes it and uh just about storytelling and how to call a game and um i I put a lot of markers in this book i actually went to the library to get this book i haven't been to the library in years to get a book i just marked it a bunch of pages things that I want to take note of and kind of studying it kind of like uh, my own textbook for announcing and uh yeah it's called you can't make this up by Al Michaels out of all the announcers books I've read and I've read a lot um probably the best Don Cherry's was pretty funny but as far as just like the the knowledge that this man has of all the years he's been covering sports and different sports too like baseball football basketball hockey he was the guy who covered the uh the olympics where it was like do you believe in miracles when u.s beat the soviet union way back in the day like during the cold war yeah and uh he's covered the olympics and a bunch of different like random sports that like and random activities that aren't even really considered sports he's done it all so about halfway through and it's it's a great book um so yeah I think uh, we will end this episode the same way we always do with This Week in Sports History, the little thing we call Twish. And I was looking through the the archives. I was looking through the buckets, the crates, and uh, there was a lot of porn. Just kidding. No. Um, the, uh, the Rocket Richard riot, riot of 1955. So this took place 69 years ago, this week in sports history, March 17th, 1955, St. Patrick's Day. Rocket Richard, the great Rocket Richard, a trophy is named after him. It's given to the uh, leading goal scorer every year in the NHL. Back on this date, in March 17th, 1955, uh, the riots took place because uh, previous game, I think it was game, or, yeah, it was the previous game, Rocket... <laughs> There was an altercation on the ice. I may as well pull this up because this is funny. Well, I mean, kind of crazy. I don't know. Uh, how does it go? It was fo- following a violent altercation on March 13th in which Rock- Richard hit a linesman. Back in the day when that happened a little more often, he took out a linesman. And uh, the president, NHL president Clarence Campbell, suspended him for the remainder of the season, including the playoffs. The Montreal fans, he played for the Habs. They didn't like it, and they thought the suspension was too severe. And the teams, uh, they had a Francophone fan base, largely Francophone fan base. They thought it was too too long. And outside of Montreal, though, people thought that there wasn't long enough suspension. I mean, you hit a linesman. I don't know, even know what you would get for that nowadays. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Uh, so on 17th, uh, Campbell, the president, uh, Clarence Campbell, he appeared in the Montreal Forum for the uh, for the Canadiens' first game uh, after the Richard suspension. 
His presence, his presence provoked a riot at the forum that spilled into the streets. The riot caused an estimated 100,000 in property damage, 37 injuries, and 100 arrests. So it was carnage. It was chaos. I mean, $100,000 in damage, I would probably be, what, close to a million nowadays. And 100 arrests. Richard had to actually come on uh, and put out a public statement like, yo, everyone just chill, everyone just chill. So they kind of like toned things down. But that was like a, one of the more interesting things that I've seen in, in this week in sports history. Um, the incident likely cost Richard the 1954-55 scoring title, a feat Richard never achieved in his NHL career, which is something that I found really, really interesting. So they named the Rocker Richard Trophy and they, uh, they, after him and they give it to the leading NHL goal scorer, but he never led the NHL in, in in scoring. So that's something that I thought was interesting. But all in all, uh, this week in sports, it's a good one. It's a hell of a week. Boy, the season winding down. Blue Jays starting up. Got these other gigs to look forward to, even though the junior weather season came to an end. Things are still rolling. Things are still happening. So I'll end this uh, episode the way set, the way I started the other one, kind of like the Price is Right. Get your dog spayed or neutered, even though our dog's not spayed or neutered because I want puppies from her. She's such a good dog. But uh, no, keep your freaking gates closed. Don't let your dogs roam the streets. Bad things could happen. With that, peace. <laughs>